let me do the lunches. Marsha, please sit down. I'm very excited for this, remember? Then your mom likes to do that. Besides, I like grandma's sandwiches better. Mom, you always forget to cut off the crust. And you always spread the peanut butter too, Mom. <laughs> well, so I failed sandwich making 101. Sue me. <laughs> Honey, I'm off. I've got an early meeting with Jim Sachs. I'll have an old coffee first. You convinced me. What is this? Another tour of lunch duty? Mom's too lumpy. Oh, not for me. <laughs> Come on, let's get our stuff ready for school. We don't want to be late. Speak for yourself. Here you go, Jessica. Mm. Come here, Mickey. Oh. That's why I'm seeing Jim Sachs. I'm trying to get the council to pass on more funds for school lunches. Good. Well, that's a great idea, Mike. And don't forget. Every one of those kids have parents, and those parents will be voting in the next city council election. Why, the point is to feed the kids. Some of the underprivileged ones, the only decent meal I get during the day. Absolutely. But it is never too early to start planning for the next election. That which reminds me, I've got a couple of ideas I want to discuss with you on the way to the office. Wally, one term at a time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, sweetheart. Have a good day. Goodbye, Bye, Wally. Bye-bye, Carol. Wally? Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? I kissed you before. That was for being lumpy. <laughs> this is for being lumpy, too. <laughs> In all the right places. <laughs> Wally is really enjoying working for Dad at City Hall. So is Peter. Nobody ever had two more dedicated assistants. I'm getting the kids to school. Oh, Marcia, don't bother. I can drop them off. It's on my way. I'm showing the house right around the corner from the school. Come on, kids. Grandma's going to drive you to school. Marsha, hi, it's me. Oh, Jan, I am so looking forward to a burger, fries, and girl talk. Not today. No? No, you know how it is. I'm boss architect now. Business before burgers. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it was practically business before family today. Poor little Patty woke up with her first cold, and, and I'm not even there to say blow. Fortunately, Philip doesn't have classes to teach today. <laughs> Oh, could you call back later? I have a sick child on my hands. Philip, it's Marcia. How is Patty doing? Oh, oh, she's fine. Well, she sneezed six times in the past five minutes. When you have a cold, you sneeze. It's nothing to panic about. Yeah, you know, you're right. I'm more reacting. Oh. Well, this parenting business is not easy, is it? Listen, would you feel better if I came over? Helped you count sneezes? You know, I've been through this with my own. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you. No, I'm not. Mature, educated adult. I can get through this. With the help of Mr. Slack, of course. Uh, well, I better be going. Uh, thanks for calling. You're welcome. And it's Dr. Slack. show real talent. Thank you. Unfortunately, it's like a trip down memory lane. See, these have come and these have gone. <laughs> well, I admit I've been out of circulation for a while. I've been raising a family. So that's probably why they seem a little old. <laughs> Sweetheart, these aren't old. These are pre-nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, I'm a quick study, and I can learn what's happening today. I'm sorry, but we don't pay people to learn. Look, I need someone who is up on today's styles. I mean, what do you know about um, Escada, Victor Costa, Herrera? Well, I'm assuming those are current designers. 
No, they're hockey players. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Mrs. Logan. Look, Mr. St. James, I'm a very hard worker. Yes, I'm sure you are. But while you were giving birth to the next generation, this business moved right past you. I'm sorry, sweetie. impact of offshore drilling. You know, Peter spends all day writing stuff like this. I mean, reports are fine, but I'm out there talking to people, you know, making things happen. I've got my finger on the pulse of Mike Brady's constituency. I went on a job interview today. Even though you're not crazy about the idea of me working. I guess I'm having lunch with tomorrow. Jordan Armstrong, condo king of California. It was really embarrassing. The owner said I was too old. Not in so many words, but that's what he meant. Jordan. <laughs> Insist I call him Jordan. Could get to be Jordy pretty soon. Anyway, he's got this piece of property he wants to develop into a deluxe complex. You know, restaurants, condo stores, everything. I never should have stopped working. I mean, look at Jan. She didn't give up her career for her family the way I did. What an amazing man. He wants to have lunch with me. Oh, boy, things are going great, aren't they, honey? Huh? You know, when I'm in solid with Jordan, we'll be making so much money, you won't have to think about work. I gotta get to bed. Tomorrow's gonna be another great day. Yeah, great. Thanks, Mr. Lacey. Yeah, I'll, I'll be in touch. Okay, bye. Oh, my God. Oh, this is great. All right, who told you? I wanted to surprise you. You wanted to surprise me. I was just going to surprise you. Beat this. I'm getting an advanced copy of the new Michael Jackson album. I can beat it. I was just offered a co-host spot on L.A. tomorrow. Gee, that's, that's great. A co-host spot on TV. Gee, that, that's terrific. What am I going to do without you? Well, I didn't give them an answer yet. Well, how could you turn down an opportunity like that? I can think of a good reason. We can't meet the kind of money. KBLA just can't compete with the TV market. Whatever you decide. Cindy, I wish you all the best. The yard store. Grandma's buying us new crayons. And we're there for us? Wait, I don't want you bothering your grandma with things like this. I'll take you. Oh, it's no bother. No, wait. Kids, have you done your chores? We'll do them when we get back. Yeah. We're only going to be gone a little while. Mother, I am trying to teach them some responsibility. Uh, why don't you kids go ahead and get in the car? I'll be there in a minute. Are you all right? Is there something you want to talk about? No. Really, I'm fine. Look, the art store closes at five. You better get going. Mom. Just buy them crayons. They're going to want everything in the store. Sure. Don't spoil them. Me? Spoil my grandchildren? <laughs> for a few minutes, okay? I want to talk to your mother. Then I'll beat you up. Hey, no, Dad, you got a head start. I thought you were taking him to the art store. I am. So what's the matter? It seems I have a daughter who's not being herself today. Mom, why are you saying that? That little explosion of yours. I just said I'm trying to teach the kids some responsibility. 
Marsha, it's not what you said. It's how you said it. Well, I'm irritable. Whoever wrote that song, I Enjoy Being a Girl, obviously never suffered from PMS. <laughs> Marsha, you and I have always been able to talk. You're my first child. Well, we invented the mother-daughter talk in this family. There's nothing to talk about. You worry too much. Goes with the territory. Mother's Manual, page 9, paragraph 2. When in doubt, worry. When there's really something to worry about, you'll be the first to know. You promise? Daughter's Manual, page 6, paragraph 8. Never lie to your mother because she'll know. That's right. Come on, kids. Time to go. Okay, I bet I'll get you down. I bet you won't. <laughs> it's a tie. <laughs> Come on. Say goodbye to your mother. Bye, Mama. Bye. 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 You know, Councilman, an upscale complex like Armstrong Center could bring a lot of jobs and money into this community. Mr. Armstrong, that goes without saying, but what you're asking for here, variances and zoning changes, not practical, it's not feasible. Well, I've gotten them before, from Dickinson, before you took a seat in the council. Look, we welcome the opportunity to work with you. But I'm sure you must understand that when you work with us, it has to be within the laws and the ordinances of the city just like everyone else. Uh, Mike, uh, Jordan isn't quite like everyone else. I'm sure that Councilman Brady appreciates that, Wally. But a project of this size and scope at that location is certain to cause major traffic congestion. Uh, yes, and I'm sure Mr. Armstrong has considered all Yes, I'm sure he has. Well, Councilman Brady, should you change your mind? You know where to reach me? Yes. Gentlemen? Mr. Armstrong? Jordan? Mike, you don't want to alienate a guy like Jordan Armstrong. Now listen, Wally. He forgot his glasses. I'm looking. <laughs> well, Wally certainly is enthusiastic. Enthusiasm is one thing. Career-wise, I know I should take the talk show offer. You want some more coffee? No, thanks. Uh, go on, I'm listening. L.A. tomorrow really wants me. I mean, how often does something like that come along? I'm sure you're right, Cindy. Mickey, you want a five? Didn't I? It was a shit. Five. Stop the racket. Do you want to go to your room? No. Let's start over. I think I'm in love with Gary. I don't want to leave the radio station. How often does someone like Gary come along? I don't know. Well, Cindy, are you really in love? I think so. You'd never catch me in love. When you get older, you'll fall in love. I hope I never get that old. Kids, this isn't your problem. It's not a problem. Beautiful. Yuck. Just play your game. I want the other job. But Gary, he's... He's handsome. He's kind. He's got this twinkle. He, he's everything I'm looking for in a man. It's everything I'm looking for in a man, too. I am getting sick. Sick. Nikki, you're such a baby. Okay, that's it. Both of you. To your room. I want you in your pajamas and in bed in five minutes. Now go. Oh, Jeez. Go. Five. Marcia, Bobby and I used to fight like that, and you were the one that always protected us from Mom and Dad getting mad. That was a long time ago, Cindy. Well, I just hoped that you would help me in making my decision. You want advice from me? Cindy, I can't give you any. You've got two people fighting over your professional services, and you're in love with a guy who sounds wonderful, so frankly, I don't see what your problem is. Excuse me, I have some kids to take care of. Marcia keeps insisting that there's nothing wrong. Well, I think she's simply going through a period of adjustment, that's all. When you stop to think about it, they have to live here with us. She's suffering through yet another job change with Wally. Something wrong with Wally? Nothing a heavy-duty muzzle wouldn't cure. He did so well during the campaign, didn't he? I wish he would take a lesson from Peter. You know? 
Peter is working on the right things. He knows how to talk with people. He knows how to be with people. I think he's really found his calling. Poor Wally. He means so well. So did the captain of the Titanic. <laughs> Mike. I designed the space to make use of the multiple computers which interconnect with the trauma centers around the city. What we've discovered is the closest trauma center is not necessarily the best one. This is kind of a central clearinghouse so that emergency vehicles know exactly where to go before they make any unnecessary trips. As I told you before, Dr. Stone is an expert in the field of trauma. I've worked in the trauma center of Tower General for over eight years, and I've seen it all. Severe wounds, broken necks, severed spinal cords, third-degree burns, and death. Lots of death. I like that. You like that? I mean, it's an issue. Many of the patients can't seem to hold on long enough to make it from the scene of the accident to the proper facility. We can network vital information from all the trauma units in the area through Trauma Central using fiber optics and the computer program that I'm developing. So all the information is in one place, ready to respond to any emergency anywhere. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Yeah. A communication center like Trauma Central can be a time saver, and hopefully a lifesaver. What it all boils down to is we need the council's help. You think Dad would be willing to go for an appropriation from the city? Well, Wally and I would be happy to talk to Dad, Greg. It's a great idea. You've all done a terrific job. Now, Peter, with the city cutting back on social programs, why not go to private donors? Well, whether it's city money or private donors, it doesn't make any difference to us. I realize that, Dr. Stone, but private donors solicited by public officials sometimes ask for favors. Now, come on, does it really matter where the money comes from if it does so much good for the people? Well, uh... Possibly. Fine. Just a superficial wound. <laughs> oh, I just wish Marsha would get here. She will. Okay, Chase. Get it. Ooh. Oh, watch out! You're a girl. Ow! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mom. I didn't hit you, did I? <laughs> you sound disappointed. <laughs> I just wish Marsha would get here. Doubles is better when there are doubles on both sides. Well, did she know that we had the court at 2 o'clock? We discussed it at breakfast. Or maybe something's up at the house. Oh, no, that couldn't be it. Mickey's still in school. Maybe she just got stuck in traffic. Well, you know what? I'm going to go try and phone her. All right. Ready to Come on. Yeah, this is Wally Logan. Jordan Armstrong, yeah, I'll hold. Yeah, you come on. Okay. Please take quiet. 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 Honey, why didn't you answer the phone? When are we going to go to the shoe store, Dad? In a minute. My big toe's starting to poke through. Shh, Mickey, let your dad get off the phone. Honey, this is Jordan Armstrong, the condo king. This is very important. Can you take the kids? No. Yeah. Oh, I can't. It's, uh, Jordan. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, hi. Come on. Yeah, did you get my message? Great. So? You're going to fund the project? Ha, ah, Jordy, that's wonderful. Oh, no, like, no, I will see to it that Mike Brady is well aware of your generosity. Oh, no, you can count on that, Jordy. Let me sit in the place for one. So one day, I'm going to get so mad that I'm going to tell Mommy. And then Mommy's going to get mad, and she's going to tell Daddy. And then she's going to get mad, and you're going to be in trouble. Mommy, 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 
Okay, kids. Where to? The shoe store. I'm gonna get some high tops. High tops? Oh yeah, that'd be good for you. But I'm gonna get some black shoes, and I'm gonna get a little bow on the top, and maybe a little strap. Well, maybe I won't. I'll get some ruffles along the side, but what color bow should I get? I'll get a pink one, and I'm gonna get a lolly... <laughs> Mom, what's wrong? I didn't do anything. <laughs> we better get Dad. Dad! <laughs> Absolutely, Jordan. Dad! Yeah. Yeah, Jordan, I've got a little bit of a family emergency here. Can I call you back? Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hi, Carol. No, Marcy's outside in the car. Oh, thank goodness. I'm worried about her. No, she's fine. She's right here. Okay, bye bye. Calm down, calm down. What's wrong? Mommy's outside crying. I didn't do anything. Okay, you two stay here, okay? And even if I did, I won't do it again. <laughs> Marcia? <laughs> Sweetheart? Are you all right? Oh, no. Is this because I didn't have the car washed? <laughs> well... Before you came home, I had a couple of drinks. I don't know what came over me. It's all right. Just calm down, honey. It's okay. But why? I almost drove the car with the kids in it. Oh, but, you, but you didn't, did you? Please don't tell me. Promise. Say a word. All right, are you ready to go? Where, where do you want to start? Oh, that's good, right there. Right there. Jimmy, come around. Right well, uh, this should get you started. Well, Mr. Armstrong, on behalf of the people of the 4th District, I would like to thank you. This is most generous. <laughs> Let's hear it for trauma center. Trauma center. I hope it starts a whole medical revolution. Mike, you know what's great about this project? Cooperation. Yeah, Greg brought in the medical community. Bobby added all that fancy computer stuff. That's digital fiber optics. Right, yeah. Jan designed the whole thing. Spatial allocation. Yeah, whatever. And it was funded by Jordan Armstrong, proving that private enterprise can work hand-in-hand -hand with the government for the good of the public. That's true. Mr. Armstrong, without your charitable backing, I don't think any of this would ever have come to fruition. Well, it was my privilege. I would like to propose naming this unit Armstrong Trauma Central. Well, thanks. Mr. Yeah. I think public service is all the recognition I need. Okay, then it's uh, groundbreaking tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Yeah, I think they're control have arranged media there. coverage, all the newspapers. So they're all going to be there. They're going to be there tomorrow. Perfect. Right. Right. Yeah, great. Jordy? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. As I said, I believe in good citizenship and civic duty. A person's got to give to his community if he expects his community to give to him. It's a two-way street. Or so Wally's led me to believe. Well, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Hi. Hi, need something? Well, I want to ask you something, but I'm not exactly sure how to ask it. Well, I've always found the direct approach to be the best. Okay. Go for it. Here goes. When do you think you might be making your decision? What? Well, there's a chance I might be able to get Ariel Jones from KPS White to replace you. What? Well, here I am. Ooh, look at this place. <laughs> Ooh, look at all these records. Allison, <laughs> hi. Why don't you have a seat? <laughs> Aren't you going to introduce us? Alice Franklin, this is my boss, Gary Greenberg. Hi, nice to meet you. Gary, this is Alice, my dear, dear friend, who has never said an insensitive word to me in all the years that I've known her, which is more than I can say about you. Maybe I'll come back in a while. <laughs> no, Alice, I invited you here to watch me work. Sit. Yay! 
You have some nerve. I have some nerve. You're the one who went looking for a job behind my back. I didn't go looking. They called me. They never would have called you if they thought you were happy here. I was happy here until right this minute. Then take the other job. I will. And then you can be stuck with Airhead at sunrise. That's Ariel. I call them as I see them. So, how long have you been crazy about this guy? You know me like a book, don't you? Honey, I wish you could have been there. Everyone excited about Trauma Central. Hey, and who got the money to get them off the ground? Me, <laughs> Wally Logan. Oh, I think I'm really getting the hang of this politics business. I'm glad for you, Wally. Uh, I'm worried about Peter, though. You know, your dad called a special meeting tomorrow without him. Uh, it's very significant. I just hope I can convince him not to let him go. You think Dad's going to fire Peter? I don't know. You know what, though? Maybe, maybe I can talk him into keeping Peter on the staff. Maybe. You're never going to believe what Wally did. Okay. All right. What did Wally do now? He solicited this big donation from Jordan Armstrong for Trauma Central. And apparently let him believe that I was going to get him zone variances for his real estate development. Well, Wally's a little headstrong, but after all, the money is for a good cause. Well, that doesn't give him the right to compromise me. I know Wally doesn't mean any harm, but boy, that doesn't keep him from doing it. Well, what are you going to do? What choice do I have? How do you tell your son-in-law you're fired and then face him and the family he's trying to support breakfast the next day? Wally, I think you know that uh, during the campaign, you were very important to me. I needed your, your enthusiasm and your dedication and your, and your diligence. Uh, it's what helped get me the job. Well, thank you, Mike. But, well, you know, I, I didn't do it alone. Peter was very important in that election. <laughs> yes, he was. I, I think you remember that I told you that uh, if I win the election, and I get on top of the job, that I'm only going to need one assistant. But I realize that. And, well, I'd just like to say that I think it's a shame, because Peter's been doing a heck of a job. <laughs> yes, he, he has. Wally, yeah, that's very difficult. Well, what are you trying to say, Mike? I only need one assistant. Wally, let me be frank with you. I think you were blinded by Trauma Central being such a good idea that you felt that you could accommodate Jordan Armstrong. I can't accept that. You're firing me? I mean, is that, is that what this meeting is about? You're firing me? Yes. Yes. Yes? <laughs> Why? You're a salesman. You're a good salesman. You, you're a great salesman. You sold me to the public. Yeah, and that wasn't easy. Selling is your thing. I'm only giving you the freedom to do what you do best. Yeah, hold it a second, okay? I mean, I'm having a little trouble accepting this, all right? It's not easy for either one of us. <laughs> I just thought that... I mean, I... Hey, never mind what I thought, okay? I'm a salesman, right? You said it. My whole life I've been a salesman. I'm a salesman. Wally, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what else to say. Listen, you said enough. It's almost time to go. Is everybody ready? Yes, yes. Everybody's ready except for me. We still have an hour, though, don't we? Oh, you look oh. like a little princess. What about me? Oh, nice. Ooh, a tie. Oh. Very nice. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Is Peter still on the staff? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You'll still be working together. Not exactly. Yes. Not exactly? Very not exactly. He's on and I'm off. I have an idea. Why don't I take the kids and go on ahead? I'm on right, shotgun. That's no fair. You run shotgun last time. That is fair. We'll uh, see you at the dedication. Wally, I don't understand. I thought you were doing so well. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, that's not what Dad thinks? No, no. Your dad thinks I'm a great salesman. 
What does that mean? It means I'm fired. Oh, Wally. God, I'm sorry. Oh, honey, I'm sorry, too. Look, let, let's go to the groundbreaking, okay? I, I still think that I should help set up. You go on. I'm gonna change my clothes. I'll meet you there. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm sorry. Don't be. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here this afternoon to break ground. We're here to witness the initiation of a landmark, a medical landmark that will take emergency medical service for our citizens into the 21st century. A medical landmark that will save lives, a landmark called Trauma Central. Oh, yeah. Wally, where is she? I'm getting worried about her. Me too. There she is. Marsha! I associate myself with this project with a great deal of pride. Not just pride of office, I may say, but bodily pride. As three members of my family are amongst the prime movers of Trauma Central. Let's hear it for the ladies! I'm great! Oh, let's hear it for my unemployed husband. And good old useless me. I would like to introduce them my daughter, Jan Covington whose architectural abilities uh, were invaluable. My son, uh, Robert Brady, in the computer field. And my son, Dr. Greg Brady, who... My brothers and sisters! Marcia. They were going to ask me to help them on this project. No, no. Right? No. But what I'm trying to do is we can't do anymore, no. right? Oh, right? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Grandpa. You know, Mickey, these things are hard for kids to understand. Yeah, it's hard for me to understand, too. You know, sometimes people get upset. They have trouble talking to other people about it. So instead, they, they go and they try to find something to help themselves feel better. That's what Mom did. Will she get better if I start being nicer? <laughs> oh, Mick. <laughs> You know what, I think Mommy will get better if we just give her all the love that we've got. Think you can do that? Sure, Dad. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kevin, Jessica, Mickey, let's go for a pizza. Ooh, pizza right. pie. You too, Patty. It's okay, honey, go ahead. What kind of pizza? Well, what kind do you like? Pepperoni. I think we can manage that. <laughs> Come on. Thanks, sweetheart. I appreciate this. Hey, my family too, you know. Mm -hmm. Where is Marsha? How long can a shower take? Well, she said she wanted some time to be alone. You know, this can't be easy on her. With the whole family seeing her like that. Yeah, do you think we should all be here? Cindy, we're all here because we love her. Surely she must know that. Well, I feel terrible because she wanted to go out to lunch with me a couple of weeks ago, and I, I put her off. And I came over one night, and all I did was talk about myself and my problems. I didn't even ask her how she was. I haven't talked to her for a while. I haven't either. Blaming ourselves for things that we did or didn't do or didn't say isn't going to put Marsha back on the track. Well, then what is? I think it's time for professional help. All right, then. Let's get her some help. It's not that easy, Mom. You can't just force someone to seek help. That's got to come from Marsha herself. Oh, I'm not going to just stand here and do nothing. I'm going to go up and talk to her. Carol, if anyone should talk to her, I think I should be the one. Wally, she is my daughter. She's my wife. Why don't you wait for Marsha to decide who she wants to talk to? Mom? Could I talk to you? Sure, honey. You too, Wally? Are 
guess I should be down apologizing to everyone for ruining their big day. You didn't ruin their day. You just changed it a little. Marsha, that is the last thing on all our minds. Our concern is you. Well, I've taken a good look at me, and I don't like what I see. Honey, the only thing that's important now is getting you better. And I've made some decisions about that, Wally. I have to get help. When I stood there, that dedication to me, babbling, with all of you staring at me, things became very clear. I want to stop. I look at Mickey and Jessica. They had real fear in their faces. My own children. I never want to see that look again. I never want to take another drink. Marsha. Oh, that's wonderful. They say that... that recognizing your problem is the first step in getting well. I hope so, Mom. But I'm going to need your help. Here's two, Wally. Anything, you just name it. I have to get rid of this feeling that... I am the only member of this family who's useless. Boy, I feel pretty useless right now. Will the two of you stop it, please? Useless? I... Well, you have a wonderful family who loves you and depends on you. And Wally, you lost a job. So what? That has nothing to do with your value as a person. Trauma Central would never have happened without you. I suppose. Marcia, you are the foundation of your family. How can I be the foundation of my family? You keep pulling it out from under me. Well, you make the kids lunches. You take them to school. You help them with their homework. Marsha, that bothered you. Why didn't you say something? I tried, but you wouldn't hear me. Well, I'm sorry. I, uh thought I was helping you. <laughs> and I know you did this. I do. <laughs> but maybe the best way to start helping me is to stop helping me. Yeah. ambitions too and you have to start letting me be my own person if you really love me honey if, if me letting you be your own person is all you need you got a deal I love you <laughs> well that's good to hear got you a small raise and a new format. A talk show mixed in with music. Topics of your choice. You want L.A. tomorrow? I'll give you L.A. tomorrow. I just don't want to lose you. Are you telling me that Cindy Brady is more important than Cindy at Sunrise? I'll put it in the contract. Where do I sign? Well, happen in my office.
Don't forget. I know. Hold the lump. Right. I like the lumps. Put her lumps in mine. Okay, one smooth, one super lumpy. Mom, did you get the color paper for my school project? Got it. You ask me, that's kind of a dumb project she's making. Nobody asked you. She's right, Mickey. Why do girls always stick up for girls? Where's Wally? In the living room, looking through the one ads. Again. Well, he'll find something soon. I know. He's just a little down right now. Well, look at the time. I better get going. Anything promising? Politics or sales? Oh, you were a wonderful salesman. But a bad politician. You were never a politician. Campaigning is selling. You were good at it. Let me tell you something. Boy, let me tell you a story. My roommate in college. It's a true story. My best friend, actually. His father was a dentist. His grandfather was a dentist. He was studying dentistry to please the family. You know what I'm saying? doing okay at it, getting along. But do you know the only part of it that he really liked and was good at? Carving the plaster teeth. <laughs> Ask me what happened. What happened? He finally gave up dentistry and became a sculptor. Turned out to be very successful and happy. Wally, you have to be happy at what you're good at. There's an ad here. It says, uh, exciting new opportunities in selling polyester bricks. I don't know what they are, but I'm sure if anybody could sell them, you could. Look, Mike, I want to apologize for putting you in the position I did. I never meant to do that. I know you didn't. Wally, we all make mistakes. Eat your breakfast. Oh, thank you, Marsha. Well, well, everything okay, honey? Oh, you know, everything's great. I mean, I have a wonderful family, and I have you, and I have exciting new opportunities in selling polyester bricks. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a lot more of it, not at you, with you. It's a new format for my show. If you've got a hot topic to discuss or a problem to share that you think might interest my other listeners, then give me a call at 213-555-KBLA. 213-555-KBLA. When I first put out the word that I wanted to use my show as an open forum, I never dreamed that my first guest would be somebody that's very close to me. And that she would have a problem that she wants to share with the listeners. Thanks, Cindy. I never dreamed I'd be on a show like this myself. Because I never dreamed that I would say, I have a problem with alcohol. And I hope that I can overcome it. I know I'm going to do everything I can. But I realize I'm lucky because I have a family who loves me and who will support me. But even if you don't have a family of your own, you're not alone out there. There are phone numbers you can call and people you can talk to who want to help. So I guess what I really want to say is that we all have problems. I tried to find relief in a bottle, like so many of you out there, and I'm here to tell you that it doesn't work. Alcohol numbs the pain. It doesn't take it away. But what it does take away is your ability to see what's really important in life, the people you love and the people who love you. Yes, they may criticize, interfere, give you unwanted advice, and sometimes you may even hate them for it. 
But alcohol keeps you from loving. And it keeps you from receiving love. So I'm going to get some help now. Because for me, without love, well, I just think that's what it's all about. On the Brady. Oh, I don't just like you. I love you. Even if I dropped your toothbrush in the toilet? You're really lucky, Mickey. You got it, you got it. Well, you've got to do something. Otherwise, this whole thing is going to go from bad to worse. It's going to explode into something awful. From now on, pal, you don't even exist. That's the best news I've had all day. Peter! Greg, is he all right? Later tonight, guest host Mario Van Peebles welcomes Susan Rutan and others to the Pat Sajak Show. But first, get ready for 51 of America's most beautiful women in the 39th annual Miss USA pageant, hosted by Dick Clark and Lisa Gibbons, next.